little pal. Come to show him where I am. Not nice. All right, folks, we're brought in with a little bit of the theme music uh, from They Live. The really good part is where it goes, dun-dum, dump, dump. But I tell you, it is one of my favorite all-time movies, and it really gets you to think outside the box. And, of course, I grew up watching him on television uh, as well. It's super uh, exciting to have uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper on with us today uh, from Los Angeles there in Sean Stone's uh, living room. Both guys are with us. And, you know, it's great. I've gotten to be good friends with Jesse Ventura. I know these two guys are friends as well or have been in the past. And so now I get to talk to both of them. And uh, Mr. Piper, uh, formerly, of course, uh, born uh, Roderick George Toombs. It is great to have you on the worldwide broadcast, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, would you mind just introducing me every place I go? <laughs> that was a fantastic introduction. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you on. I tell you, so much is happening in the world, but let's get into They Live. You've been in a lot of movies, but uh, what's your take on the 25th anniversary of They Live? Uh, it's uh, really interesting. The, uh, the movie They Live, when it was made, was more about Reaganomics at the time. But with the, uh, as the music lulls you to sleep, conspiracies, one of the things that the movie has done is it's taken on a life of its own. Uh, it never gets old as we see the world evolve uh, and try to make us a little chip. Uh, the same thing's happening over and over again. You watch They Live and it gives you, it's kind of, it's kind of like the uh, cliff notes for what's going on. Well, it certainly is. I mean, you've got the part where the drone flies over you, and you go, hello there, my little friend. Uh, and, 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 and now I've actually videotaped drones twice in Austin watching people at the park. Now I'm actually living and they live. Yes, uh, uh, and, and it's an awkward place to live, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the, you know, uh, John Carpenter, when uh, we shot the scene with the homeless people, he actually used the homeless people there. John is a big activist, you know, and I give him all the respect in the world for that. Uh, and, you know, turning out and showing what the world has become. I don't know why America has homeless people. It's, uh, it's terrible. But also another thing we had to do was pay off the gang so they wouldn't come and wreck our trailers. So there was, you know, little conspiracy, little gangs uh, for warfare. Then there would be the homeless people we'd take care of. Uh, and it really became a, a, a venture of love to a certain point and trying to do the right thing. Again, I, I give all the credit to John on that. What is your favorite part of the, the, the film? Well, not the fight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, that was a long fight. My favorite part of the film? I think when... The character Nada looks out and he says, uh, I believe in America. Um, I think that's probably the biggest statement of the entire movie. Uh, one thing, for instance, when we would go to press conferences, you know, if you happen to be wearing something like a Rolex, we took it off. Or, you know, we John and I both drive Cadillacs trying to buy America, buy American and, and keep the country safe. Uh, and... In, in that shot, you had all uh, the skyline of Los Angeles and uh, the character Nada, which means nothing, obviously, which means nothing. Uh, the thing that, you, that was interesting with Nada staring over the L.A. skyline was you didn't know anything about him. You didn't know where he came from. He wore a wedding ring. You didn't know why. You didn't know where he was going. He's, he's that lost American uh, wandering around, and he still looks out over the skyline of los angeles and he says a very profound statement i believe in america i do too absolutely you know one of my favorite lines is because i feel like this all the time trying to politically awaken people that they're being lied to that there's an agenda it's not left or right it's hey there's mind control going on the signals broadcast 24 hours a day through all this media just become aware of it and they'll say there's nothing going on and i want to say put on these glasses or start chewing concrete <laughs> no, without a doubt uh, without a doubt and I'm, by the way i'm a big booster of you 
Uh, I've watched some of your your uh, taking care of America and watched you in a hotel room while the buzzing was going on. And I, I think you do a terrific job. This is uh, this is the kind of thing that needs to be exposed to America. Uh, they need to know. You know, they're trying to put us to sleep. I'm a born rebel. I can't. I can't help myself. I think Sean might be too. Rowdy. Rowdy. Roddy Piper is a born rebel? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> well, best guess. Best guess at it, bud. And, uh, you know, I've got four children, um, all born here in America. I've got two son in laws. One of my son in laws is a captain in the Army, been wounded twice. My other son in law is a Green Beret. You know what? With they live in the mind control and everything that's going on, there's one thing that, uh, that can escape people. If you don't have somebody personal to you that has been harmed by not only by the conspiracies and all the tributaries that lead to that, or run off that. If you don't have someone close to you shaking at nighttime because he got blown up twice, went over again and got blown up two times, then it doesn't mean so much to you. You know, every time we want to go to war, send your boy to war. My boy's already been there. And it, and it becomes with the mind control, trying to dumb down the society, uh, drugging society, putting stuff. I mean, it, it is a, it's a major, major conspiracy for a new world order. It's no doubt about it in my, excuse me, in my humble opinion. There's no doubt about it that the world is trying to evolve into something. It's Rowdy. Just, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. I'm sorry I interrupted. What no. do you think it's, what do you think they're trying to uh, evolve it into? Oh, this, uh, again, I, I respect you and what you're doing, and Sean, uh, and your opinions are much... No, no, but we want to know yours. Don't be humble, sir. Okay, no, but you're much more educated on this than I am, and I don't want to... This is too serious. I don't want to... Uh, this is just my humble opinion. Sure. The world has to go someplace, okay? We've got so many countries around the world fighting. Uh, that the world has to get together in some kind of way, in some kind of fashion, instead of killing people, killing children for oil. Um, I had one one uh, idea that crossed my mind was, as soon as they let us see the aliens, we'll all get together because it'll be us against them. And uh, you need some kind of shock value like that. Uh, either that or we're going to self-destruct. Um, I think that in in all cultures, people are basically very good-hearted. It's just the extremists or the people that are running and pushing the buttons. Um, I think that uh, they want one governmental force to to govern govern the world. Uh, it's just that everybody's got their own agenda. You can't get that done unless Gandhi's around. You can't. You you you. We can't get everybody on the same page. Well, another idea is if we all spoke the same language, it'd be kind of cool because the communication is gone. Uh, and then we can't tell when they say obey. You know, we were mad at Russia for how long? But if, I've been there and they're pretty nice people. They don't want to over the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. If you go back and look at it, Russia didn't want to start a nuclear war. Pretty good people around the world. So what is the world trying to evolve to? We have so many different people, and there's zero population has not, uh, has not happened yet. And we're growing and growing like China. What are you doing, China? The thing in Syria. What's China doing? Why are we sending our boys? Somebody else sending it, boys. What's the UN doing? So what, what, what do I believe is trying to happen? I believe that a lot of people with their own agendas are trying to come around and make one government to govern the entire world. And there's some things they're gonna have to do. We all gotta speak the same language and we all gotta be sincere about what's going on and not so greedy. Absolutely, because you can have the Star Trek idea of a one world government, everybody's nice. The problem is the people running the global government are not nice people and they want control. Basically, I use the they live analogy, and we'll come back to break and get your take on this, uh, uh, both of you. 
as the globalists are like psychopaths that are building a psychopathic world government. So the allegory of them being space aliens and they live is absolutely accurate because these aren't like regular people and they punch our emotional buttons. They punch our human buttons to cold bloodedly control us. So how do we learn how the psychopaths operate so we're aware of their tricks so as good people we can come together and not blow the planet up. We're going to come right back with our amazing guest, both of our guests, Sean Stone and Rowdy, Roddy Piper. Straight ahead is the 25th anniversary of They Live. And I'm told it, uh, the DVDs are uh, selling off the stores like hotcakes. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Right now we're getting into consciousness and how to get people out of the matrix. And films like The Matrix and films like They Live do that like no other films can. Uh, and we, of course, have Sean Stone and uh, Mr. Piper on the broadcast with us. And I'm very honored to have both of them on the show. I'm a big fan of the movie They Live, but also of Rowdy Roddy uh, Piper. You can go uh, to his website, and we'll put it up on screen for TV viewers. It is uh, RowdyRoddyPiper.com, and it's, it's a really great site. It has a lot of uh, really uh, uh, interesting information up there on it. And he also has his Twitter, which we'll put up on screen uh, for TV viewers. Uh, but for radio listeners... Uh, you can simply uh, go to the address. You guys put his Twitter up on screen. It's it's on that computer right there, and uh, folks can can go there and check that out uh, as well. Uh, but uh, guys, continuing with where we left off about consciousness, it's r underscore Roddy underscore Piper. It's at r underscore Roddy underscore uh, Piper or Rowdy Roddy Piper dot com. As I said. Where do you see the whole world going currently? We were talking about globalism, the new world order, the things that are happening. Do you have hope for your children and your your grandchildren? Oof. I guess I'm the only one that's got children between the two of us, huh? <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm a little afraid for my, uh, for my, my youngest. I've got four children, the most beautiful children in the world, in my opinion. And uh, the youngest uh, just is going to PSU to uh, become a doctor. Um, and they're all over this kind of thing. She's very aware. Fallon is my youngest. She's 18 years old. She's very aware of uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, the Internet, you know, I'm from the generation before computers. And the uh, Internet's got so much information that... The, the, the thing is, the kids, they're, they're targeting the kids, um, and they're telling them how to think. Uh, they're dumbing them down in school. For instance, when my kids uh, were in school, they had, like, no paper days. They didn't have paper to write on because of a shortage, or they'd pull the teachers. And that's a real heat getter for a dad who makes a living uh, wrestling with his body to when I go to feed my family and all of a sudden you've got a school that has no paper for my kids. So why do you have no, well, you see, it all, it all starts with the kids. And as you get older and a little wiser, you're harder to fool. But you put up another pop idol for the kids. Put up, put up another uh, uh, piece of music that maybe isn't, is nothing but uh, vulgarity. For the kids 
you know, bang it into them. Uh, you know, I can remember, uh, I think you know the Brunswick Affair probably, Alan. Oh, yes. Yeah, and for those who don't know about the Brunswick Affair, very quickly, uh, about, I think, in the early 60s, they had a TV called the Brunswick. And uh, the people that bought it, dad would go to work, mom would be there, and dad would come back home. And all of a sudden, she bought 20 pounds of dog food, but they don't have a dog. And they found out that there was a little button in a TV called the Brunswick. And when the commercials came on, they did something that shot out these waves and made you buy. That's in the early 60s. Can you imagine how sophisticated they are now? <laughs> Holy cow. So if they had that kind of mind control back then, the only reason I, don't, I think that I'm not... Uh, I'm not a good case study for them is because I uh, I was a born gypsy. I don't really have, there's no place to halter me and I'm not afraid to speak out. Uh, they, but, but they're my children. And you say, what do I worry about my children? And I have five grandchildren and I'm very worried about them because the earth is not stable right now. Uh, Absolutely, because it's being run by control freak psychopaths that might as well be space aliens from another planet and you raise the whole point about mind control in the 40s they would put subliminal ads in movie theaters and double sales of coca-cola and now it's so much more high tech and it's working on the zombified public but there is a minority that it actually has the opposite effect on it i want to talk about that in a long segment when we come up, uh, back and also open the phones up for questions on they live for mr piper and mr stone 25th anniversary but here's the big question when we come back uh, Rowdy, why, why are we somewhat immune? Why does the propaganda only irritate us? Why does the signal only make us get angry and more awake? What is different from us than the general zombified public? We'll be right back. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> Infoworth.com, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> I judge what is the secret of the universe. <laughs> Infoworth.com. <yeah. laughs> Rowdy Roddy Piper on my show. This is so cool. And the whole office is pretty excited uh, listening to him on the show. Everybody loves They Live. You know, I got to say, They Live is probably in my top three films. Anytime I run into it on television, I have to watch it. My wife's always like, there you are watching that on DVD again. I've probably seen it a hundred times. And uh, because it just breaks down everything. It's so incredibly evergreen. And there he is, radio listeners. You go to Infowars.com forward slash show. See the free video feeds. There is Mr. Piper right there on our screen. So, so sir, you heard the question before the break. Uh, dealing with the nature of reality. Dealing with... You know, all the points uh, that are being uh, basically put out there by the media. Uh, what do you think at the bottom of the rabbit hole? What do you think is really going on and dovetailing it with They Live? Um, right. So many variables. Uh, first of all, when, as, uh, just before the break, you were saying, like, why does it, why does it uh, control some people? And why does somebody like myself or maybe Sean... It doesn't control. Um, and with They Live, the character Nada was based very much on my life. Uh, I don't come from any place. I, don't, I was born in a place called Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, coldest place on earth. And I was moved all over the world till I was 13 and I went out by myself. And then I got into a business with no rules. Uh, pro wrestling at 15, no rules at all. You could do, the only, the only thing is, you know, you had to survive it. Um, so I, I, wa I wasn't raised under the institution. I, I, I wasn't uh, there to program every day. They've got, you know, they got to hit you every day. I understand on the signs, but in my particular case, my, my job was to make you angry. And so I was doing a lot of subliminal things uh, in my interviews. And from my own business, I know what it is to control somebody. It's like when the when the radio first came out and people that would sit by the radio and like when that what was it sea biscuit would listen to the race or or joe lewis with smell uh, max 
uh, smelling, uh, what well, can't remember the other guy's name. The boxing. The boxing. Yeah. You, sir. They would all tune into the radio because it was like this unbelievable device. And then when television came on, the one of the hottest shows was pro wrestling because it was easily produced and it went, it's an international language. But within my ranks, there are no rules. So you can't program me. And then once you get a little older, and I've seen people that are programmed, you learn how they do that. And it becomes evident that uh, the different things that they do in the government, questions you're not allowed to ask. Jesse Ventura is a good friend of mine, been a tag team partner. And Jesse uh, told me, um, They gave Jesse a lot of, uh, they wanted to know how Jesse got to be governor. <laughs> you know, and the, the, Jesse himself had told me about a situation he got into where these government officials came and uh, took him underground and started asking him questions. They just didn't realize Jesse's not afraid. Um, and Jesse Ventura lives in Mexico. I, I talk to him as often as I can. Uh, so Jesse's not a programmable guy either. I'm Sean. Yeah. I don't. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Governor Ventura is going to be on the 27th uh, the, uh, before he starts his whole media tour uh, in the uh, month of uh, October. Very excited. He's got a new book on JFK coming out. And I think you just answered my question there that I said at the beginning of the break. And I was going to reintroduce what makes those of us that are immune or resistant to the programming. And I think it's that we grew up as individuals and we grew up and had a brush with the streets. I grew up in a middle class area, but for whatever reason, there was a lot of fights, a lot of corrupt police, government drug dealing, a lot of police running hookers, you name it. And I grew up, you know, watching this going on in my neighborhood and then watching the same cops give speeches against drug use at school. And I called them out and they threatened to kill me and stuff. But I think that was kind of my wake up was I put the sunglasses on because I saw the other side and saw how naive everybody is. And I think you said it best. They want to get the youth, dumb them down, make it all a bunch of political correctness to where the kids don't even know how to make a sandwich. They, they're not allowed to get in a fist fight to learn how to defend themselves. They're not allowed to play dodgeball. Uh, they're, not, uh, they're at school till 8 o'clock now because parents got to work two jobs. They are attacking our basic humanity because a basic human is not going to be a slave. Yeah. You know, Alex, what's interesting, I'm, I'm listening to how the discourse is always they, right? And the funny thing is they live. Who is they? People always say, who is they? You know, the conspiracy theorists, we're always saying they. And what, what's interesting about what you're saying and what Rod, didn't say, what Rod was saying, all of us, I think, come across this, this corruption at some point in our lives, right? And it's, it's not just, the fact of traveling is amazing, obviously, when you get brushed with the streets, it's amazing. But at the end of the day, we all come across corruption. We all see the corruption in the police force. We all see corruption in schools, in our own family, right? The question is, do we go along to get along? Or do we start to point it out? Now, those of us who are, not, who are more inclined toward justice and whatnot, we want to see the, the good thing happen. But there's still this, this factor in the film that we haven't talked about yet, and that is there are sociopaths. There are people, this part of the population, that, are, that, are, that have no emotion. They are not human. And I think the human race that has not yet come to terms with the fact that there are 10% of the population that are sociopathic, that do not have human emotion or boundaries, and they are not human. So when we say, hey, we'll give him a pass, he's human, hey, he can, you know, he, he made a mistake, we're, we're not understanding that the, fundamentally the they we're talking about is a small percentage of the population that does not care about humanity. They live, we sleep. Uh, Rowdy, uh, what's your take on uh, why you've been immune to their programming and why some people are born with the glasses on or have them on pretty early and other people, it seems, are just born to be slaves to the sociopaths and the psychopaths that are 1% of the population that run them? Oh, it's uh, a good question, bud. Um, you have to be, um, you have to live within the system to be programmed. You, they have to at least get to you, your senses in some way. And if they don't know where you are, and they don't know how, like I didn't have an, until I was 19 years old, nobody knew I was alive. I didn't have a social security number. I didn't have any passport. I didn't have anything. Um, and so I was this kid 
that uh, would do whatever I needed to do that the guys, the the older pro wrestlers would tell me to do. Um, How did you fall into wrestling at a record age of 14, record young age? 15. Uh, I was, uh, I lived on the street for two years and uh, I was uh, staying at a youth hostel. And the youth hostel was a YMCA and I was the 167 amateur wrestling champion and I boxed and somebody just didn't show up in Winnipeg uh, at the matches. And my amateur wrestling coach was a referee. He says, I can get you 25 bucks if you want to fight this guy, but you'll lose your amateur status. I'd never seen a pro wrestling match in my life, but I came fifth in the world playing the bagpipes. And I went to my band and I said, what's going on? They said, we'll play you in. <laughs> <laughs> four, four bagpipers, a bass drummer with a big furly hat, two snares, and me come walking in. And I don't know if you remember Mr. Perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it was his dad, Larry the Axe Henning. And, you know, it was still sawdust on the floor. And he didn't much like my entrance. It was the shortest match in the history of the Winnipeg Arena. He beat me in 10 seconds. Um, and when So I was back then, it was like real wrestling. It wasn't just like ballet. Oh, no, no. There's this kid coming with all these bagpipers, and he was a top guy, and he just took me and, and beat me. There was, he broke my nose, split my eye open, and they came and said, kid, you did great. How'd you like to go to San Francisco? They put me in a van and snuck me over the border, and I rolled every day until I was 19 in the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, and they finally got me a green card. You know, they ought to make a movie about you. What did you think of the movie The Wrestler? Ah, uh, what did I think of the movie The Wrestler? Um, poof. it's one of those things that, like, with They Live, with the conspiracies, you know, and tying that all in, you know, you got to go, you got to go deep. You have to have the courage to dive in and, and the faith. And with The Wrestler, I give Mickey Rourke a, you know, th thumbs up for portraying the character. But you just skimmed the surface. You don't understand real programming, nor how ugly, how ugly that gets um, day after day after day. Uh, so wrestling, I mean, wrestling in the early days was also, I mean, was people a lot of times actually fighting. And then I guess it segued because of all the injuries into something that was more stylized. Um, yeah, kind of. It, it, let me just give you, an, I don't know if this applies, but let me try. When uh, I was like 17 years old, there was this promoter. And when you got in to get paid, the old timers would tell me, you, you held out your hands and the first thing he put in was $10 a quarters. And he would look at you. And then he'd put a $5 bill and he'd look at you. And if you smile, you'd stop. So they would tell me, don't smile. Because he would program you. <laughs> if you ever had a clicker, to go into the arena because you used to get paid by the house, you'd be fired. Um, if you asked questions about how much money was being drawn, you'd be fired and blackballed. It's to total control. Well, I've been blackballed five times. <laughs> Doesn't bother me anymore. Because um, there's a lot of guys in my sport that don't have the opportunity to be on a wonderful show like this that you can speak your mind. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people just around the world that are very confused because you can't just, uh, they can't just pinpoint what it is. And that's where I come to people like yourself, Alex and Sean, uh, a little bit of renegade. I am not the kind of people, you know, I don't like to be told what to do, but at the same time, I like to try to do the right thing. Absolutely. Wow. Well, Rowdy Roddy Piper is our guest with Sean Stone, and, and we've only got like 15 minutes of the show's over. We'll take you guys right to the end if you can do it. I want to take some phone calls. Uh, Rowdy, you ready to take some calls? You betcha. All right. Let's go to Will in Georgia. Uh, you're on the air with uh, the legendary star of They Live. Go ahead. Thanks, Alex. That's a great movie, Rowdy. You did a good job. I was a, it's a true ministry. Uh, on the lay, They Live, I actually uh, married into the They part of They Live that controlled the New York, L.A., Sodom and Gomorrah Axis, Hollywood, Babylon. And they taught my kids every morning on Saturday during worship services that everybody wasn't part of their tribe, was subhuman animals, cattle, just like I said in the movie. That they're, and they actually put that, I mean, the, 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 the preacher, the rabbi, would tell them that uh, your job growing up and from birth, they told them this, is to cheat, lie to, rob, enslave, and kill all the Gentiles. All right, well, listen, do you have a do you have a specific question, sir? Well, no, I mean, it just, 
we're, we're Whigs. America is, our focus has to be on the creator who's named the sovereign of the United States, the creator of the universe. Perfect. All right, well, listen, I appreciate your call. We, we've got questions or comments for our guest. We don't screen calls, so sometimes it becomes a soapbox. But there are always subgroups within any culture that teach that we're the best, everybody else. I mean, look what we say about the Arabs when we go invade and attack them. And then, you know, or what happened to the American Indians? I mean, this is something that goes through cultures everywhere. But, I mean, I guess the, the movie They Live does speak to class stratas. But I think it's about more about individuals being psychopaths and sociopaths about how they could be black, they could be white, they could be German, they could be Jewish, they could be Chinese. There are people genetically, I think, uh, who who really aren't human. Uh, well, Alex, I was going to ask, I actually wanted to ask Rowdy that because, um, you know, I'm really curious to know where that story came from because Carpenter uh, wrote it. And, and I mean, in your, in your, he must, you know, in your interaction with, it, with him, I'm sure you came across some interesting discussions as to what he thought, you know, who, who they really are and if, does he really believe that they, that they are aliens? Yeah, who is they? Exactly. Yeah. Um, at that time in 88, I think it came out in 88, uh, they was the propaganda the world was shoving down our throats. Um, but John and I, we, we talked a lot before we made this movie. I took it real serious. And, um, you know, I don't want to speak for John, but just the way I remember it, uh, is again, I'm, I, I don't think that we're the only, I don't think we're the only living, uh, source of energy in the universe, uh, by any means at all. Um, and there's big committees right now getting together and saying, talking about, um, people for, excuse me, uh, things from other planets, aliens, whatever you want to call them, tall whites, grays, reptiles. Uh, and we, we weren't that detailed with it, but John and I both agreed that we don't think that we're alone in the universe. And, and I think that and I ran across a doctor friend of mine who didn't agree with me at all. And I found that amazing that uh, an educated man like that would not, um, would not see that far, but maybe, you know what? Maybe I'm the crazy one. I don't know there. Well, also <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of Mr. Carpenter, who I would love to get on, I'm a fan of his work as well. Obviously, his 1980 whatever year it was, the thing with uh, Kurt Russell is so good. I mean, that is another amazing film. Big time. Uh, John made a lot of uh, a lot of films together. Um, <laughs> here's a, just a little they live note. The last uh, Kurt Russell film, I think, with John was Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, yeah. Kurt was driving the semi with sunglasses on. Well, after that movie was finished, they had all those sunglasses left. That's the sunglasses you see and they live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a little levity as we're going along here ruling the world. Um, you know, it's all about budget. Uh, but the story for They Live came from a, from a short short story, or did you yeah. come up with the story himself? No, it came from a short story called Eight O'Clock High. And uh, That's right, the guy's still alive. We tried to get in contact with him. Ah, I would have loved to speak with him. Yeah, we want to get him on. He's still alive. He just... He's got a website. Uh, let's let's jam in one more call. We'll come back with one short segment. 25th anniversary, they live. Rowdy Roddy Piper is our guest. Unbelievable. Uh, let's talk to Nick in Nevada. Nick, do you have a question or a comment for uh, Rowdy? Yeah, Mr. Rowdy Roddy Piper, you have been such a huge influence on me. And uh, I've been a professional wrestler for over 10 years. And I idolized you. I looked up to you. And it's an honor and a privilege to uh, speak with you. Uh, on the air, and I also host a podcast as well for, uh, on the uh, topics that you and Alex have been discussing uh, through your time here, and I appreciate you for that as well. Uh, my two questions for you are, sir, is uh, one, did you expect uh, the movie They Live to be such a huge cult classic as it's turned into be? And two, uh, how many boys in the wrestling business uh, do you think are aware of the New World Order? Great, great questions. Good, good job. Um... What was the first one again? Well, we're going to go to break, but answer the first one. Did you think that They Live was going to be so huge? No. No, I didn't. At the time, I didn't think it would uh, stand this test of time. No. We're going to come back and only got like six minutes left on the other side, and then we'll let them go because the show's going to be over here. You could have World War III with Syria, but we're talking about They Live. But that's kind of fitting because it gets us thinking. 25th anniversary, you can go to RowdyRoddyPiper.com. Uh, and you can uh, see all the great info that he's got right there on the site. We'll be right back. 
had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. By the way, uh, Julie Wilson, one of our writers, just ran in here and she saw the clip. Rush Limbaugh came out today and said he thinks it's a false flag attack in Syria staged by Obama. That story's going to go up on InfoWars.com. We have the video clip. Nobody else has it. Uh, we're going to be breaking that uh, coming up at InfoWars.com the next 20 minutes. She's going to post an article uh, with all that information there. I want to take a few final calls here uh, with our amazing uh, guests that we both have, Sean Stone and Rowdy Rowdy Piper, uh, here with us. But, wow, what do you make, uh, Mr. Piper, about having like all these mainstream people now say they think the whole thing in Syria staged by the rebels. There's video of it. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to see everything we've talked about. Sean Stone and I and others is now just mainstream. I Do you think the world is putting on the, the black sunglasses more and more? Oh, Carl. I think that, uh, I think the world, you know what I think? I think that, I think the world, the real men of the world have to stand up and say, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. <laughs> and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Time to take a stand, boys. You know what? You got a little courage. Stand up for yourself. Baby Jesus. Oh, a bunch of sniveling whiners and over in Syria. Like, I'm not qualified. I just know, like, who are you going to send over there? Why don't the Chinese help? What is the UN doing? And I saw those pictures. Uh, I'm not qualified, but I got four kids, and I got real angry. Yeah, they're trying to punch our buttons, but, man, Rush Limbaugh coming out saying it's a false flag. Wow. I mean, ah, it's a ratings ploy. Yeah, uh, who knows? Sean, that's a that's pretty big deal, isn't it? That's, that's a huge deal of Limbaugh saying it, which probably gives credence to the fact that, you know, how can you sell the idea of, of the... Uh, Assad government using chemical weapons when it's been leaked for months that the U.S. has been trying to sell chemical weapons and send them there as a for a false flag purpose. I mean, it's almost like the conspiracy is becoming more and more flagrant in advance, right? People are, are can, can see it coming. The story is getting reported, so you can't, you know, it's hard to keep it contained. What are you going to do? How Listen, I don't want to hog the show. We got like three minutes left. Rowdy Roddy Piper dot com. It's got links to his Twitter up there. Uh, just amazing. And I was talking to Rowdy earlier. He said he'll come on in every once in a while with us. We're very honored to have him here on the show and honored to know that he's uh, uh, a fan of our work. We're just incredible fans of his. Real fast callers. You got quick questions. Ryan in Missouri, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, gentlemen. And uh, they live, they had the underground tunnel system, underground base system. My question is, um, some people think that Denver International is like some super secret base, spaceport, whatever you guys want to call well, there's it. there's giant underground bases everywhere, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I guess my question is, do you think it's, you know, like the movie, they say it's almost like aliens. Does, I mean, I guess Rowdy already answered that, but does he think that, uh, you know, does he put two and two together like that? I, th I know exactly what you're talking about in Denver, and that they had a huge portrait uh, from, uh, like, the Holocaust to... Uh, uh, chemical weapons. Chemical yes. weapons, and then they took the picture down. So I understand what you're saying. Again, they, they, you need to stand up against they. And I, I yes, yes is the uh, the answer. Coming into that tunnel, it's like where the Illuminati have their meetings. Anything that you know anything about about those meetings? Do I know anything about them? I like to go in there and say hi to those guys. <laughs>
Well, Sean, I bet you know about those oh. meetings. Uh, I haven't been invited yet, but I think it's time he and I do a movie. <laughs> and we'll go chew gum together there and you uh, go. have some fun. Well, yeah. folks, uh, Rowdy, Sean, stay there. I'm going to say bye to you at the end of the show. This has been an amazing interview. Thank you both for your time. And uh, Mr. Piper, it's good to know you. God bless you. Thank you. Wow, wow. Okay, sorry the other callers. We're out of time. Not only news tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow live, 11 a.m. Central with the radio. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.